guys. Welcome back to the Balanced Blonde Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm so happy to have you here listening. If you loved my recent episode about my ayahuasca journey, then you'll be very excited to hear today's episode with the fabulous Dennis Naughton. He is an ayahuasca expert and he can answer so many more questions about this beautiful plant medicine than I can answer on my own since I'm just beginning to learn about the subject of plant medicine and... I've learned a lot from him. I really look up to him. And I'm also doing his microdosing program that starts at the end of February that we talk about in this episode, which you can find on his website called Aya Flow, which is A-Y-A, as in ayahuasca, flow.com. And we talk all about the details of microdosing and what to expect and what it's all about. So if you have any questions, just listen through to the episode. And if you still have questions, you can let me know in email, which I try to be pretty good at responding to. You can also contact Dennis through iaflow.com and we could potentially microdose together um, via the internet, which is all really exciting. So just a couple things about plant medicine and ayahuasca before we get into this conversation, because this is a delicate subject and I want to make it really clear to you what ayahuasca is. So it's a beautiful and sacred plant medicine from the Amazon rainforest. And something that Dennis emphasizes when we talk about plant medicine in this conversation is that this phrase has a very special meaning. It doesn't mean a medicine as in a drug or a supplement or something that we're used to talking about in the Western world. He's not suggesting that ayahuasca and the ayahuasca vine are intended to treat or cure physical diseases and other physical conditions, Um, but rather indigenous people of the Amazon have used ayahuasca and the ayahuasca vine for thousands of years, using and honoring them as wise plant teachers that help people on their spiritual path. And if you listen to my solo episode and if you hear the lightness in my voice, and the shift in my energy, and I think you'll see how ayahuasca has helped me on my spiritual path. And as much as I want everybody in my life to try ayahuasca, you can just ask Jonathan and my parents and my friends and everyone who I've been raving about this sacred plant medicine to ever since my journey. I know that trying ayahuasca is a deeply personal decision. So it's something that you really want to draw inward and have a conversation with yourself about whether or not you'd like to invite these plant teachers into your life. And if you do, it's very critical to sit with experienced facilitators with integrity and extensive training in an established spiritual tradition. So I've gotten a ton of questions from you guys on how to find one of those people full of integrity. And I truly believe that if you're meant to try ayahuasca, then the right situation will present itself and will fall into your lap. So if sitting in a full ayahuasca ceremony seems like too much for you, I totally get that. And maybe microdosing would be of interest to you, in which case I'm excited to introduce you to Dennis. Um, lastly, if you have any physical or psychological ailments or conditions, you should consult with a physician before considering taking any plant medicines. I just have to say it because I'm not trying to give medical advice here. Um, but I do believe if the situation is right and if you're healthy and in a good state of mind, it can be very, very spiritually expansive and expansive for the mind. So I'm excited to microdose with Dennis's program and really dive deep into this three-month journey with him and everyone else who he'll be leading online. I think for me, it's going to open a lot of creative pathways, a lot of spiritual pathways. And um, as usual, I'm only telling you guys about this because I think it's something that will greatly enhance people's lives if they're, they're meant to do it and have it introduced into their lifestyle. So there's all that. I'm thrilled to have Dennis on. If you couldn't tell, he's someone who I just deeply admire. He lives in such integrity. He's so full of love and 
to be completely honest, we recorded this episode twice for you guys because the first time we just talked and talked for many hours and we realized we wanted this episode to be more informative than anything else because this is a topic that a lot of people need to um, really not need to, but probably want to learn about and something that a lot of people don't know about. And I certainly didn't know about it before I started researching it, before I went on my own ayahuasca journey. So if you're interested in um, ever going on a plant medicine journey, I think this episode is perfect for you. And if you're not interested, that's awesome. I still think you'll learn from this experience. That's what I love about podcasting and this podcast in particular is that people tell me, even if they're not interested in doing some of these things that I talk about, they still learn a lot and it opens their eyes and maybe expands their minds a little bit, which makes me really happy. So anyways, Thank you to Dennis for coming on. You're so incredible. Um, I really, really look up to you and I'm thrilled for everyone to hear you on today's episode. And before we dive into the show, I want to take a minute to thank a new sponsor of this show that I'm very, very thrilled about for a lot of different reasons. And actually, it's very fitting with this episode because many would say that this is also a plant medicine as it is a hemp oil brand called Ned. That's N-E-D. You can find them at helloned.com and go to the link helloned.com slash balanced as in the balanced blonde to get 15% off of their amazing products. They have everything from natural organic hemp oils to body butters and all sorts of things that not only help with keeping inflammation down in the body, but help us sleep, help to treat chronic conditions, lots of different chronic conditions that you know I suffer from quite a few of those. They have hemp-infused lip balms. And something that I love about this company that has recently been shared with me is that when they're in production, they infuse all of their products with good vibes and positive affirmations. And since I'm a huge believer in energy, and I know that a lot of you guys are too, I think you can feel those good vibes when you receive the products in the mail. Um, They have a really unique process where they extract from the finest organic hemp plants, all grown with tons of love on a small 12-acre homestead in Colorado, right by the fresh Rocky Mountain water. It sounds so beautiful. I would actually like to go there. So if you've been interested in trying a hemp oil that helps with all sorts of things like sleep, insomnia that I suffer from, um, it's very anti-inflammatory. It's a natural pain reliever and has actually really helped get me through my joint pain with Lyme. It's also used to treat anxiety and PTSD. It can be used to treat depression and really calm people. It has a rich source of antioxidants and can also treat tons of other serious chronic conditions like epilepsy and Parkinson's and Alzheimer's, which is totally amazing. The products do not get you high. Uh, It's not a psychotropic. It's just something that has CBD in it. So it will really calm you. And it's just very, very beautiful brand with tons of different amazing products that I'm really enjoying trying out and incorporating into my daily life. So go to helloned.com slash balanced to check them out, shop around, get 15% off of your order. And thank you, Ned, for being a new supporter of the show. I can't wait to hear how everybody likes these hemp oils and body butters and lip balms. So check them out if you guys order. Send me some pictures on Instagram or to my email so we can geek out together and you can tell me how much you like the product. All of that said, let's dive into this episode with Dennis and learn all about the beautiful ayahuasca plant medicine and so much more. Okay, Dennis. I'm so happy to have you here sharing as my resident ayahuasca expert, as I'm calling you. And people are so excited to hear from you and get their questions answered. So I have written down a huge list of questions from the listeners. 
because ayahuasca is kind of this really new plant medicine to a lot of us. So first, just say hi to our Soul on Fire listeners and tell them who you are. Hi. Uh, First, I want to say to you, Jordan, thank you so much for this invitation. I'm so grateful to be here on, on your podcast. It's a huge honor. And thank you so much for introducing me as an ayahuasca expert. Really appreciate that. At the same time, I want to say from my side, I don't really see myself as an expert. I see myself as just a humble student of the plants and the indigenous people, you know, the people that have brought these, these medicinal plants, these sacred plants into the world. And I've been working with these plants for thousands and thousands of years. They tell us that these plants are like plant teachers you know, plants that teaches us, they heal us, they show us many things. And so I just see myself as a humble student of these plant teachers. And I think there's much more to learn, yeah, in the place where that comes from. Absolutely. Well, that approach is very inspiring to me. Given that in the world, I think a lot of people feel like they're experts on a certain subject or they study it for a little while and really consider themselves an expert. Even I have been that way because I dive so deep into things. So I appreciate how humble you are. Because to us, all of us here, me and all the listeners, you're definitely an expert to us. So thank you for being here. I think we should start with what is ayahuasca, just plain and simple for those people listening who are not familiar and maybe are hearing about it for the first time. Mm. Very good question. So ayahuasca can be explained in, in different ways. And I think on the most basic level, Ayahuasca is a plant. It's a vine. And this vine comes from the Amazon forest, you know, the rainforest of South America, Brazil, Peru, Ecuador, Colombia, um, Bolivia, other countries. And this vine grows and it grows next to a strong big tree, it goes to the canopy of the forest and that spreads his beautiful you know, small vines and their tiny leaves grow beautiful green slender leaves and small red and white flowers that sing their songs to the sun. So that's ayahuasca. It's a vine and comes from the Amazon rainforest. It's a plant. If you mix that plant with other plants, for example, chacruna is a leaf. It's a a bush that's family of the coffee plant. And you mix them, you cook that in a certain way. Then it becomes ayahuasca, which is a medicine. And that's what mostly people refer to when they speak about ayahuasca. They mean the medicine, ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a psychoactive sacred medicine you know, that these people from the forest, indigenous people, the Indians of the Amazon rainforest have used for thousands and thousands of years in their spiritual ceremonies for healing, for awakening, many ways. And this medicine is now slowly coming out of the forest into the Western world. And that's a very special movement that's happening because a few decades ago, no, very few people would have heard about ayahuasca. Yeah. Like 100 years ago, like you would ask anybody, what is ayahuasca? And they would have no clue what you would right. be talking about. And especially in this last decade, two decades, three decades, ayahuasca has come out of the forest into the world. And I think now there are very few countries left where ayahuasca has not visited yet. Yeah. It's a very special time uh, to live in. So ayahuasca is, is, a, is a medicine, a sacred plant medicine that was used by the indigenous people and slowly coming into the world. And it's my belief that ayahuasca comes in the world in this time to really help us with this great shift, this great transformation, this next step in the evolution of humanity that's happening to help us with yeah, that shift. I agree. So can you tell us a little bit about that shift that's happening? Hmm. So it's a beautiful shift. And if you look at the planet uh, Earth, it's, you know, a a ball. This ball has an axe and that axe has a certain angle. And the angle of that axe makes a huge cycle, a circular movement. And this cycle is a huge cycle that takes 26,000 years to complete. 
so long. Yeah, it's a massive cycle. And we just came from one half of that cycle, which is the northern half, masculine half, uh, the age of wisdom, the age of knowledge. And we just finished that half of that cycle on the 21st of December 2012. And we just slide into the southern half of the cycle, which is the feminine half, age of intuition. So we're going from an age of knowledge, wisdom, into this age of intuition. And that's a huge shift that's happening from a uh, male dominant energy to a much more feminine energy. And this medicine, which is the grandmother of all plants, as the indigenous people of the forest tell us, you know, they see the whole kingdom of the plants as a big family. And in this family, ayahuasca is the grandmother mm. with a lot of wisdom, a lot of teachings, a lot of experience. Know, many things to share the grandmother has. So this grandmother of all the plants is coming in this shift into the world to help with this transition into this feminine energy, into this age of intuition. At least that's the way I see it. I think yeah. it's a very precious time to live in. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Yeah. That's so interesting to think about because I think I mentioned this to you one time before, but that time that you're speaking about, December 21st, 2012, is exactly around the time that I went vegan and transitioned the way that I approached eating food and the way that I treat animals and the environment all based around food. And the wild thing is I based my whole career off of it, which took me in such a different direction than I ever would have gone before. And I see it as a much more feminine direction and different than what the status quo was telling me to do. And I really followed my intuition, which was so different than everything I'd been taught in school and people saying, you know, don't take a big risk. Why would you start a blog? There's no such thing as blogging as a career at that time. Um, and it's just interesting because maybe everybody listening could think about where they were in their life around the end of 2012 and were there big shifts? Did you start listening to your intuition more? I don't know. That just fascinates me. Yeah, it's a huge shift. And also for people, that's good to realize because for some people, maybe nothing happened in 2012 or right. nothing has even happened in these years. <laughs> maybe not exactly lined up with like that End of the cycle, which is probably normal too. Yeah, because it's 13,000 years going into another 13,000 years. So that right. shift will take probably, you know, maybe a couple of centuries to <laughs> fully complete. Yeah. So some people might not be aware of it. But if you look just at several things in the world, you no, know, you can see that shift. And one example, for example, if you go back just a few centuries, a few hundred years to really gain knowledge. No, sometimes you have to be initiated in a certain lineage or have to be deep in certain organizations to reach you know, certain levels of information, certain levels of knowledge. And now in this time where we live, you can Google anything and right. you can find almost everything in an instant. So you can see that knowledge is not that important anymore than a few centuries ago. And the intuition, you know, it becomes much more important. Like you are a good example of that. I had my own shift around that time. And just seeing in the last decades, not just the plant medicine coming into the world, but also other modalities, you know, like yoga, meditation, tantra, Ayurveda, all these ancient modalities are coming out in this time of the shift to help us to build our intuition, you know, to make a stronger connection with, our, with ourselves. And to step more into that personal leadership. Yeah, it's so fascinating. It is. Those are all the different modalities that I'm obsessed with and talk about on this podcast and yeah. have changed my life. Um, and I feel so grateful to live in a time where that information is available mm. and also a place like LA where it's accessible. Ayurvedic spas and all these things that. I realize are not in most parts of this country, at least. Mm. Yeah, it's very powerful stuff. Mm. And we're really lucky, mm. really lucky to have it as a part of our consciousness. Mm. So how can someone find a safe ayahuasca ceremony? Mm. 
good question. Like first of all, I want to say ayahuasca is a medicine. But as the indigenous people tell us, it's not just the medicine that you work with, in the sense of like, is it a liquid? You drink it. You know, there are certain molecules. There's something happening on a, on a level of chemistry, maybe in your brain, in your body, in your blood. That's one part of ayahuasca. But ayahuasca also has like a spirit. And the Indians call her Madre Ayahuasca, like Mother Ayahuasca, or Abuela Ayahuasca, like Grand Mother Ayahuasca. And in the end, you're working with the spirit of that plant and drinking the medicine ayahuasca is just like entering to a portal to communicate with that spirit. And that spirit is singing a song. That's what the indigenous people tell us. And with this song, she sings people and calls people to her. And so that means it's truly spiritual work in the truest sense of the work, because you work with the spirit, and in this case, the spirit of the plant ayahuasca. And why do I tell that? Um, it's really important to acknowledge that song that you're singing, because some people might hear that song, and even when it's not a song that we can hear with the human ears, like, oh, wow, I'm listening to a beautiful song. No, it's a song that you can hear in different ways in your life. Like some people read a story about ayahuasca, and like, oh, wow, I feel the calling to do that. Or you hear a conversation and you're interested and, oh, wow, it would, that sounds interesting. Listen to a blog, see something on the internet. No, any way this song can come to people and this song calls people. But some people might not hear that song at all. And that is because the medicine is not calling everyone. Ayahuasca is not a medicine that is for everyone. So that's first of all good to realize, like, do you feel the calling not to be part of an ayahuasca ceremony? It's not a good reason to go to a ceremony because somebody you really trust or admire or as a friend or family member has done ayahuasca, had a good experience, so I also should do it. That's not a good reason to go to a ceremony of ayahuasca. It's really the only reason would be I feel a deep calling, maybe even on a level that you can't really explain. Mm -hmm. You don't really know why. That would be the only reason to go to a ceremony. Right. So that's, I think, very good to realize for people you know, that that should be the start of every ayahuasca ceremony. Like, do I feel the calling? Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, because a lot of people were wondering, how do you know if it's right for you? How do you know? And I think from my experience, at least, it's very similar to what you're saying, which is when it was time, um, it just became clear. And I didn't really have much of a reason other than knowing that I had a lot of questions about my soul's purpose on this earth and being very sick and um, feeling like I was on the brink of understanding why I was so sick and what can I do to make the most out of this and heal myself and heal others mm -hmm. and kind of make something positive out of this really difficult journey. And ayahuasca just kept coming up, like maybe this would help. So for me, it felt right. I didn't even know that much about it. And um, I can now safely say, truly say, it was, it was right. And it was at the right time. And had I done it sooner, it would have been too soon, which is why... I told this story on my solo podcast when I learned about ayahuasca on a boat and um, people, you know, said, let's do it. I was very turned off because it wasn't time. I would have, I would have not been ready. So would you say that's common? Like you find that often to be true. If someone's not ready, then they'll just be very turned off to it because of the timing it's a good example of what you're saying now like on this boat you're like no that doesn't feel right i don't think i want to do that why would i ever do something like this if you have any of that kind of thoughts a very clear sign that you do not hear the calling of the medicine so that means it's at that moment not for you right and in the in that case i would invite everyone not to doubt or to question what feels like this Trust your feeling, trust your intuition, follow that guidance. Mm. Because your intuition, your inner teacher, is one of the highest innate sources of wisdom you can connect with. That source is always right. 
Yeah. And then later, you know, when you are looking for the answers to those questions, you know, what's my soul's purpose? Why? You no. Know, what is the deeper roots of my sickness? Then one point you came to ayahuasca and it felt right. You know, what changed in that time in between? Very difficult to word that. But the intuition changed for sure. Yeah. And to listen to your intuition, that's the right way to do. And I've seen many people, they want to do a ceremony very badly. You know, mm-hmm. They really want it now and quick. And But then reality kicks in and things come in between and it's pushed more into the future. And I invite people to really trust that process. Yeah. Because the medicine is very wise. Yeah. She knows some people are ready to come. Exactly. Even the people who I had over a few hours ago for the podcast who um, were saying that they were signed up to be trying ayahuasca in January, but something happened and now they're doing it in March, which they're pretty indifferent to when they're doing it. I was just thinking, hmm, I have a feeling that's for a reason and I'm no expert, but I know ayahuasca calls when the time is right. And even if there's a reason, doesn't mean you have to understand the reason or know what the reason is. Just good to trust the right, intuition first. Just trust, exactly. Yeah. So, big question people ask is this something that you can do at home? <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question. I've seen that question pop up many times, also in like online forums, Facebook groups. And it's a question that really surprises me because. Ayahuasca can bring people to very deep, vulnerable states, you know, deep states of healing, um, can bring you back to traumatic events that you maybe lived in the past and kind of you relive it in a ceremony. You now it comes to the surface to be healed, to be released. And those processes are very strong processes. And those processes is really important to be guided through. And maybe you can share a bit like, I mean, I've heard your experience, like how would you have felt going to such a deep uh, ceremony of ayahuasca without people being there that were helping you and guiding you? Terrified, terrified. I needed support and I felt so supported and loved when I was going through something very scary, which felt to me, like I was out of control, out of my body, in hell, what I perceive hell to be like. Um, Didn't trust that it was ever going to end. And I needed multiple people to soothe me and calm me down, but not just people, people who are really experienced with the medicine so that they understand You don't interrupt someone who is in a terrifying place. You don't force them to go outside. You don't force them to snap out of it because that would be terrifying as well. That would be so traumatizing that the trauma that I was reliving or living for the first time, whatever it was, would have become a new trauma. And instead, because it was handled so beautifully by this group, it became so healing and so mm. loving. And I look back on it as the most healing experience of my life. Mm. But if I was alone or if I was like at home with one person who had no experience, oh my gosh, yeah. no. Yeah, that's. I'm so happy that you share that uh, with everyone that's listening. And I have the same recommendation. Ayahuasca is not something that anyone that's not properly trained and that training takes years to do at home alone or in another place alone. And in this time, many people are looking for that, you know, and especially like, I want to do it alone. Where can I find uh, the medicine? And cooking ayahuasca is a very sacred process. And yeah, you can buy, oh, if you look, probably dried ingredients on the internet. And for sure, you can find recipes here and there, how to make it. But a couple of things to that. First of all, with dried ingredients, you will not get a high quality uh, ayahuasca. No, you high quality ayahuasca, you only get with fresh ingredients that are cooked within, let's say, a day or two. 
Um, that's high quality medicine. Very important that you drink high quality medicine because the quality of the medicine will determine the quality of your experience. So it's absolutely important that when you drink ayahuasca, you drink high, pure quality of medicine. Amazing. And just the process of cooking, like, okay, you need so many grams of this, so much liter of water, so many grams of this, you know, the temperature of the fire should be so many degrees and so many hours you cook it. That's just a tiny piece of making a sacred medicine. The other piece is calling in the spirit of that medicine into that brew. And that's a very sacred process that only few people that really have studied the process of cooking know. Never read some of the forums like, you know, you make ayahuasca like this and, you know, cook it like this, this long. I, yeah, it's for me always interesting to see that because I don't think those people truly understand what it is to make a sacred medicine. And for example, the Santo Daimi, you know, I'm a part of the Santo Daimi. Uh, it's a lineage tradition that comes from Brazil. When they cook the medicine, they cook it with a whole community. Sometimes like 100, 200 people, the whole wow. community comes together, they cook the medicine and they sing to the medicine, they dance. And when they sing all the prayers, all the intentions, all the teachings, they sing into the medicine while they cook it, while they dance, while they celebrate in the middle of a huge ceremony. And in that way, you really pray that spirit into that part yeah and that's the making of a sacred medicine that's so beautiful all other things is just something else right Not sure how to call yeah it. so if you're trying to cook it yourself in your own kitchen with some ingredients from the internet not a good idea very bad idea i would say very bad idea yeah. um so then i know people will be thinking how can they trust the integrity of the group that they're doing it with or the place or the shaman mm. um how can they trust is it just an intuitive thing or is there some way that they can tell so finding a place to the ceremony for most people always is like a journey you know they do some research they speak to people and then they find a place and maybe that place is not available and then they find another place and it's beautiful to have that journey um so i invite people to take your time do your research, speak to people. You know, there's no hurry to do it next week. And would be happy to give a few guidelines around like how to find a place, like what to look for if you found a place. Is it a good yeah. place? Is it not a good place? Because I think what's important for everyone to realize is that in this moment, there are so many places coming up that offer ceremonies with plant medicines like ayahuasca. And there are some amazing people out there that have really studied, that have really dove into this work and dedicated their lives and time, you know, to, to this kind of medicines. And I bow to all those people doing that. It's amazing. But at this time, there are also several people out there, and I think more with time, that do not have the training and do not, might not have all the qualities that it takes to, to lead a ceremony. Because it's very um, strong work. And, you know, for example, some people might be yoga teachers that have taught yoga for years. And maybe they've drunk ayahuasca like five times or ten times. And like, okay, I know what it is to be a spiritual teacher. Let's hold a ceremony. And those people do not have the right training. And I think yeah. it can be really potentially dangerous, you know, for those people to lead ceremonies. Because they do not have the experience and they never studied like how to work in that deep realm of the medicine. So it's very important that you find a place where people that are leading those ceremonies really know what they're doing. They have the experience and they're trained to be in that position. So what to look for? First and foremost, most important um, guideline I can give is trust your intuition. Yeah. Really trust your intuition. As I said, trust your intuition. Like if you go to a web page, you hear about something, you get in contact with people, you know, how does it feel? Does it feel good? Or does it feel not so good? And let's say, even if all your friends have gone, your whole community, your family, dear people you trust have gone to a certain place, and you, you feel into it, you read about it, you know, you hear about it, and you feel, no, this is, doesn't feel it's my place. Even when all those other people say yes, your intuition is no, trust your intuition. And I highly invite people, if you, feel deeply on an intuitive level that a ceremony is not for you even when you let's say you even have arrived at a place 
that you plan to go for a ceremony. And even maybe, you know, the ceremony starts and you get the first cup of medicine and you look this person in the eye and you feel like, no, I don't trust this situation. It doesn't feel good. Step away. Mm. Never drink that cup of medicine. So, and, such a good tip. Yeah, trust your intuition. And there's no need to explain your intuition. If it's no, it's no. If yeah. it's a yes, it's yes. Yeah, and that's applicable in all areas of life. Yeah. Intuition, yeah. strong. And going in this age of intuition, no, it's such a medicine. It's very beautiful to listen to that. So that's that's the first guideline I could give. Second guideline, no, see if you can find out that the people that are leading the ceremony are connected to a certain lineage. Mm. And there are lineages you know, in the Western world that work with ayahuasca as a medicine in their uh, rituals, their works, their ceremonies. And they have worked with that medicine like for, for decades. Those lineages have been around for a while. So such a lineage has a certain way how they work. And somebody that is a leader of ceremonies in such a lineage most probably have an experience, has gone to the training of that lineage, is part of that lineage. So it's normally something to, that you can trust. Mm. Those lineages are, for example, the Santo Daimi that we spoke about before, a lineage that started in Brazil. Well, there are many Santo Daimi places in the U.S. Also, Uniao de Vegetal, another lineage that started in Brazil. And like that, there are more of those lineages out. So see, is it connected to one of those lineages? Find out, ask the people, you know, send them an email, call them, whatever way you're in communication with them. Or read on if they have a website, you know, see if you can find it out. Because if they're connected to such a lineage, I would say that's a, a good sign. But not all people are connected to a lineage, because you do not have to be connected to a lineage. So another point, that's my third, let's say guideline, would be what connection do the people that lead the ceremonies have with indigenous tribes in the Amazon? Because those tribes in the Amazon, that's the place where this medicine ayahuasca comes from. Those tribes have thousands and thousands of years of experience. And these tribes have come up with ways to study this medicine, the ways to study spirituality. Um, those ways are, for example, dietas, long periods of study where people go in like isolation in the jungle, mm -hmm. very deep. Um, strong processes where you go into celibacy sometimes no pure water very little food and in those very vulnerable places teachings are passed on mm. and those diadas you know, in several tribes in the Amazon are the preparation to get people in the place to be able to lead ceremonies yeah. so you could ask you know, what's, what's the connection with indigenous people have you spent time with a tribe have you studied with them have you done diadas have you learned and in that way try to find out how those people came to the place, you know, where, where they are. And for myself, for example, I spent like a year and a half with an indigenous tribe in Brazil, the Yawanawa Indians. Over that time, I spent one year and two months in Dieta, studying the plants a right. long time. And also I'm, I'm part of the Santa Daimi Church. You know, that's my lineage, that's my connection. And so it's good to ask people those kind of questions and to find out how much experience you have with lineage, with tradition, is that tribe? And like that, just get to know more about the people and then again go back to intuition. Does it feel good? Yeah. Does it feel good? Does it feel right? Yeah. Is the opportunity just opening? Is that flow, that synchronicity there? Very good sign. But like you said, with the two or the few people that you had on your podcast before, you know, January didn't happen. It happened Maybe it's going to happen in March. Right. And to trust all that, very important. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, just a brief interruption from this episode with Dennis to talk about one of my favorite companies in the world, Silver Fern. Silver Fern brand is, first of all, something that you can learn all about if you listen to a previous episode of mine with Charity Lighten who is the CEO and co-founder of the brand. She was on episode 106 of the Balance Bond podcast. So if you're interested in learning all about probiotics, digestive enzymes, plant-based protein powders, kids' probiotics, on and on, way more great stuff, then head to that episode 106 with Charity, who I love, 
So that's the big thing. Everybody that works at Silver Fern brand is so kind and has really made me feel like a part of their brand family. We have a lot of fun things in the works that we're doing together this year that I'm excited to talk more about soon. But what you should know is that you will find the best probiotics on the market on silverfernbrand.com and also the best digestive enzymes. In fact, these probiotics work so well that I like to empty out the capsules into my smoothies that I make in the morning after I've blended it because I'm not sure about blending probiotics, but I mix it in with a spoon and seriously, it helps my digestion so much and my digestion has been very, very compromised with Lyme. So something that you'll learn about if you listen to the episode with Charity is that the reason these probiotics work so well is because they're DNA verified which means that the probiotics don't die when they get to the gut, which is what happens with a lot of probiotics on the market. Unfortunately, Um, these good, healthy gut bacteria, which are the reason why we take probiotics, are proven to live once they hit the gut. So they're superior quality. They're non-GMO. They're completely free of anything artificial. They're very natural, very easy to incorporate into your life. Um, Plus, they have bundle packages on their website. You can get probiotics and digestive enzymes all in one, which is really, really great. Um, They have a very cool natural fiber sweetener called Kakato, and they have a lot of fun things in the pipelines. So this is a company to support and to love Silver Fern brand. You can use the code BLONDE at checkout. That's B-L-O-N-D-E at checkout with Silver Fern to get a nice discount on their products. And I really encourage you guys to shop around. I use their plant-based protein powder every single day, specifically the chocolate, but the vanilla is really good too. And yeah, support Silver Fern. Thank you guys for supporting the show. Now we'll dive back into this episode with Dennis. I feel like Yeah. Something you said is that finding the right place is part of the journey and ayahuasca is already working through you. And I believe that so deeply. Mm -hmm. So it's all interconnected. And once the place is found and everything's set, it's just trust that it's right. That's really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. Another question I have is about shamans because I know like before we did this recording, I can, I asked you, are you a shaman? Because in my eyes, you are. And I'm exposed to a lot of people who are shamans, you know, people who call themselves shamans and have told me that they're shamans, practice shamanism, et cetera. And then you told me something really amazing, which is that even after living in Peru, doing all these dietas, living with the tribe, You only know I've ever met one shaman in your life. Uh, So tell us about that. What makes someone a shaman? So I lived a year and a half with a tribe in Brazil. And next to that, I lived two years and a half in in Peru. I was running a center where we also were working with ayahuasca. And that tribe in Brazil, they're called the Yavanawa. It's an indigenous tribe of, let's say, a thousand people. Divided over like eight villages, over a big river, Rio Gregorio, in the state of Acre in Brazil, deep in the forest. And I met them in a very special way. And when I entered their land and started to learn from them and live with them and spend time with them, and enter those diadas. In the second diada I entered, that was opened by one of the elders of the tribe. At that time, this man was 103 years old. Yeah. so old yeah amazing I was like a no a very tiny uh, skinny man mm-hmm. and he opened this one month dieta for us the name of this dieta is called Suya it's like you can compare it to an initiation on, on the spiritual path in their tradition so I was receiving that Suya in the middle of a ceremony with ayahuasca I was like on the floor of ayahuasca he was on the floor of ayahuasca we sat opposite from each other and he started to no, he started that prayer to open the dieta, and I just felt him. I looked at him, and for this was just a profound realization: like this, this is a shaman. This is the only shaman that I have met till now. 
And that was such a beautiful realization. And I could see a tiny bit of what he was doing. And I was like, yeah, this, this is a true shaman. And then I started to ask the tribe, you know, is he a shaman? And in Brazil, the word for shaman is called Pajé. And the people say, yeah, this is a Pajé verdadeiro, like a true shaman. And for me, that was such a beautiful moment. And what I learned from that is that the path to actually become a true shaman is, is a very, very long path, which requires a tremendous amount of study and a very high level of consciousness. And for me, still to this moment, that's the only shaman I've ever met. And for me, that man had set such an amazing example that I know I have many decades to go yeah. till I can come close to what that man was doing in that night. Um, yeah. So I'm a humble student of the path of shamanism. That's so beautiful. And I think the word shaman you know, I think it's very difficult to say, you know, okay, this is your study. And if you have done this and this and this, then you become a shaman. Yeah. I don't think there's like a certificate of a shaman or you get like a, a button. Now you're right. a shaman or something like that. I don't, that doesn't exist. Right. And it can be that people come up with that. But I think in the in ancient traditions, there's a very long path with a very high level of consciousness. And yeah, it might be that the word is being used different in a Western modern tradition. But I stick to that traditional use of the word. Yeah. And I've seen one and I know how, how it looks like. And I haven't seen another one since. Yeah, I appreciate that very much mm. because I think here in the Western world and in Los Angeles, I have met way too many people who call themselves a shaman. Mm. Not saying they're doing anything wrong, mm. but it doesn't hold up to this 103-year-old man that you're describing. So it's really interesting because a lot of people have asked me, how do I know if I'm going to do ayahuasca that I'm doing it with a real shaman? So I think uh, the answer to that question would be, they don't have to be a shaman, but they are students on the path of shamanism who have maybe learned from a very wise shaman. And also, you don't have to be shaman to lead the ceremony. Right. Like, for example, in the tradition of the Yawanawa. And what was really beautiful, like a few months ago, I was there in a very deep ceremony. And some of the leaders of the tribe were there, you know, spiritual leaders of the tribe. And they were really sharing very openly in that ceremony. And what they were speaking, let's say that two, three people younger generation that are stepping up after the passing of, of that elder. His name is Tata. And they even acknowledge in that ceremony, like, we are not true shamans yet. We're on the way, we're on the path, but we have not reached that level yet. And for me, that was so beautiful to, to hear that. But in the tradition of the Yawanoa, for example, they say if you have completed the Dieta with Muka, their most sacred plan, then you're in a very good place to lead ceremonies. So there, there are other ways to study, to learn, and those people can be very much so in the space and with experience and the knowledge to lead a ceremony. So you don't have to be shaman to lead a ceremony, but you for sure need uh, you know, the right amount of training and experience. Right. Yeah. That's very helpful. So going back to ayahuasca, what it is to help people understand, how does it differ from psychedelic drugs like LSD and mushrooms and other psychedelic drugs that I don't even know of any others, <laughs> but I know there are. So just to classify a little bit, there are different categories of, let's say, substances. And I just want to at least mention three, to give a bit of a roadmap for people to understand. Those three are psychedelics. Another one is entheogens. And then the third one is the kingdom of the fungi, you know, the, where mushrooms belong. Right. Because if you look at, let's say, all living organisms on the planet, there are three kingdoms. You know, the kingdom of the animals, where also we belong to, mm -hmm. you know, the kingdom of the plants, and we have the kingdom of the fungi. Right. The fungi and kingdom is it's, huge. It's huge. It's a massive. It blows my mind. It's so ancient. Yeah. So mushrooms belong to that kingdom of the fungi, complete different subject. And so let's concentrate 
on psychedelics mm. and entheogens. And many people in these times call ayahuasca a psychedelic. Right. I don't agree with that. I don't see ayahuasca as a psychedelic. And I would say ayahuasca is not a psychedelic. A psychedelic is something else than an entheogen. And if you look to those two words, you know, they're words that come from the ancient Greek language, psyche, the mind, delic, the light. Psychedelic, the light of the mind. If you look to the word entheogen, also an ancient Greek word, theo, God, the divine, and within, entheogen, to connect with the God within, to connect with the divine within, or to awaken the divine within complete different group of substances. So in the group of psychedelics, psychedelics are all man-made substances. We're speaking about LSD, we're speaking about MDMA, and you now, for example, also DMT that people smoke. Right. You know, it's extracted by human beings. It's you not know, sometimes even made in a laboratory. All that are psychedelics. And I'm not the expert on psychedelics, so I want to say that really clear up front. But what I've learned is that psychedelics leave toxic traces in the body. No, especially heavy metals in the nervous system. And your nervous system is a very important system. The nervous system works as an antenna in your body. And with that antenna, you receive and transmit spiritual energies. So working with psychedelics toxifies that nervous system. And when that nervous system is very open, balanced, strong, you can receive the spiritual energies very easily. So that means you have a good connection with your intuition, you know, your communication with people is open, all those things are much more easy. But when that nervous system is clogged, toxified, closed, much more difficult to connect with that spiritual energy. So it might be in the long term that psychedelics close that antenna down. Mm. Another thing that's really good to know for people, and I don't think that many people are aware of that, that psychedelics are all made in laboratories. And because around the regulations and legalities, normally those are kind of labs that are somewhere in a garage, no, illegally in a corner. Right. The making of psychedelics, no, MDMA, LSD especially, l- leaves a lot of side products in that chemical process. These side products are very toxic to nature. So what happens, you know, and I'm, I'm from the Netherlands, and the Netherlands is a country with a very liberal way of looking at substances. Right. Um, so the Netherlands is, for example, one of the biggest producers of MDMA in the world. Oh, I didn't know that. So what's happening in the Netherlands is something really interesting for people to know, and most people don't know that, is that those laboratories that somewhere in the garage produce these toxins, and I'm not exactly sure which toxins there are, maybe ammonia or ammonia, very toxic to the nature. And somewhere in the middle of the night, they drive and dump like hundreds of liters of these toxins on any farmland to get rid of it. Because they cannot just bring it to a dump or something, but it's illegal. Right. And those toxins really toxify the earth so much that even for like two years, no vegetables or fruits can grow there. Oh my gosh. And Holland has made like a fund every year. I'm not sure how much it is, let's say a million, but maybe that is not the accurate amount to help farmers to clean their land. Because you know, it's, it's private land, so normally the farmers are responsible. But Holland said, okay, let's help with the cleaning of that. And last year, that fund was already depleted in the month of May, June, very quickly in the year. Yeah. And Now the first traces have been found in corn in the supermarket that have traces of the toxics made of MDMA. That's awful. It's awful. And it's toxifying the planet. So even when there are huge, let's say, healing properties of those psychedelics, Mm -hmm. on the long term, it's just not sustainable. Not good. So I think that's important for people to know. It is. And ayahuasca is different because... It's a plant medicine. It's not a psychedelic, it's an entheogen to connect with the divine within. And all entheogens are plant medicines. And these plants have been waiting for us on this planet for millions and millions of years. And the indigenous people of this planet have learned to work with these medicines, with these plants, have learned how to make it, how to use it, how to become prepared to, to work with them, to use them as a medicine, to lead ceremonies. These medicines have been around for thousands and thousands of years. Psychedelics have been around for 
half a century, a few decades. Well, as the MDMA, when was it discovered? 60s, 70s, right. you know, those yeah. years. Thousands of thousands of years of plant medicines. These plants have stood the test of time, which I think is the most difficult test to stand gloriously through many different times, through many different ages, in many different cultures, in many different forms. So it has been proven to be completely safe. You know? And time has shown that over and over again. And plant medicines are, you know, ayahuasca is completely non-toxic for your body. That's good to know. You know yeah. For me, that's very important very to know. Very important. That's I, a question everyone wanted to know. Yeah. Is it toxic? It's and not it's toxic not. for your body. It's so amazing. Yeah, it is. And it clears the energy channel rather than closing it up, like you're saying, with these psychedelics. Yeah. So, so it's I'm a not... huge fan mm-hmm. of plant medicines. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I really recommend people to feel into that. Definitely. Definitely. It's so interesting because people really call, I mean, you hear a lot like psychedelic drug ayahuasca and that's just not accurate in my view and i know that my view might not be the view of everyone uh, that's not accurate at right all. Yeah. well your view is i trust your view very trustworthy so then people wanted to know is it safe to take ayahuasca if you're taking antidepressants that question can be answered in let's say several ways and if you read on internet you can find a lot of information around that because ayahuasca works in a very specific way inside of your system now there's a molecule in the medicine ayahuasca that's called dmt dmt is a psychoactive uh, molecule it's made in your pineal gland also so your body already makes it but dmt is one of the alkaloids that give you the visionary experience that you have in an ayahuasca ceremony you know, you kind of enter a dream world, a visionary world. And DMT is very crucial in that process. And normally, if you take DMT orally, it is so through your mouth into the stomach, the stomach automatically deactivates DMT. There's like a, a small particle that deactivates the DMT. In the medicine ayahuasca, there's a particle that deactivates that particle in the stomach. Mm. That's called an MEO inhibitor. Oh, so the MEO okay. is what's in the stomach. So it inhibits that. So the DMT can come into the blood and then you can feel it. Wow. It, may, it might be a very specific explanation, but I try to explain it very simple. Yeah. And that MEO inhibitor, people say, is not completely compatible with SSRIs, which mm. is a molecule that can be found in several antidepressive right. medications. But what's good to know that there are dev, uh, several different types of MEO inhibitors. And I'm going to make it simple because I can talk very long about this. You have reversible and irreversible MEO inhibitors. And the one in ayahuasca is a reversible selective MEO inhibitor. Those inhibitors and that are not the inhibitors that people compare it with on, on the internet for. This is quite new information that I'm sharing now. Also, science is just finding this out. They have way less problems with interaction than normal MEO inhibitors. So, I would say it's good to be careful. Right. But it's much less dangerous than people might write about on the internet because of the reason I just shared with you. Yeah. And um, so that's, let's say, the scientific way of looking at it. And so I think it's really important that, that people ask their leaders of ceremonies and their, the people that they're going to work with what they recommend. Yeah, is absolutely. It, is it something to just go into and not talk about? No, no, address it. And no, a good ceremony should ask. Yes. Like, are you on any antidepressant drugs or taking any beta blockers or anything like that? and see what those people tell you. Another thing that's good to know was if you combine SSRIs, no antidepressive medicines, with ayahuasca, they say the serotonin syndrome can come up, where it can be potentially lethal. Mm. What's good to know, as far as I am aware, there's never been a serotonin syn- uh, syndrome 
in any ceremony that I've heard of or on any scientific research that I've read of. It's, it's never been one documented. So it's, wow. it's a very Good to thing know. that could happen, but it's not something yeah. that actually has happened yeah. or at least not in my awareness. Sounds like one of those things that is talked up to be like a huge danger. But exactly. when you really, really look into the science and the experiences, you haven't seen these dangerous things happen. It's really interesting. Before, before I went into my ayahuasca ceremony, I talked to my doctor. I have a Lyme specialist who I see all week long, almost every day. And at first, I was afraid to tell her that I was doing it because I didn't want her to say, don't go. Be- being so sick, it's common to have people worry about you and say, don't do these things. Um, like my family, for example, felt a little worried. And my doctor said, none of your medications for Lyme will interfere. In fact, ayahuasca is something I highly recommend for patients who are sick because it can really be so healing for the trauma of of illness and especially chronic illness. And she was just so supportive and it was such a gift for me because my mom was with me and um, my doctor got to talk for 30 or 45 minutes to my mom and myself about all this scientific research that has been done and documentaries she's seen produced by doctors that just say how wonderful it is so healing and so safe for people even people who are sick but for everybody and she was such a supporter and when I got back she was one of the first people who I spoke with shared my experience with her shared with her that I um I saw her while I was there I saw her soul and saw that she's really on her soul's path healing so many people Mm. dedicating her life to being an infectious disease doctor which is also a really hard path because even the cdc doesn't recognize lyme disease as a chronic illness so her path is such a healing warrior path and i saw her soul Mm. and just loved her so deeply even more than i already did already Mm. did so yeah i mean from a lot of different angles it sounds safe yeah and i mean science is doing amazing research now especially in the last decade and more so in the last years Mm -hmm. showing beautiful benefits also now they found out that alkaloids are found in the ayahuasca vine that are not deemed to different alkaloids they help they could possibly help with neurogenesis, which is the regeneration of like neural connections and like, you know, new making new cells in the brain, something that science has thought impossible now for decades. And in 2017, the first research was released, the result of that research that ayahuasca can possibly stimulate neurogenesis. It's like, you know, really amazing. amazing. But above all that, whatever the scientific research says, I think we also should not forget that science is quite young, especially the Western medical world is quite young. Yes. And this medicine is there for thousands and thousands of years, way before science started. And that test of time, that's the true test of safety. So I want to see that some current medicines as they're called in the western medical system will still be there in two yeah. three four five six seven eight nine ten thousand years <laughs> i think that very few of those medicines that we call this day medicines will still survive in that timeline so ayahuasca true. has stood that test so i bow to the safety of, absolutely of that medicine. Yeah. that's such a good point such a good point i know it's so interesting to think I know that like my family, my parents and their generation are so comforted by the words of my doctor and my doctor is an amazing doctor, but I know they would also be comforted by the words of a lot of other doctors. Um, 
And you make such a good point that plants have been around for so much longer than science. And that's how my mind thinks. That's how my intuition communicates with the world, but um, not everyone. So yeah, it's just an interesting point for sure. So I want to get into something I'm very excited about, which is your microdosing program of ayahuasca and I'll be partaking in it and Mm. I'm just so looking forward to it and can't wait to see what kind of clarity and creativity and healing that it brings me. So tell us about this. Mm. Yeah. So if you look back in this conversation, there are a couple of ways of working with ayahuasca that we have mentioned. We spoke a tiny bit about dietas. I just mentioned them. That is the ancient way of the indigenous people. Or a path to work on a deeper level with plant medicines like ayahuasca to be prepared to lead ceremonies or or to become a shaman, medicine man, a spiritual leader. The very deep, profound way of working with plant medicines. Then we talked about ceremonies with ayahuasca. Beautiful way to work with, uh, with this medicine. A way that is not for everyone. Um, but if for the people that feel that calling, well, it's a very special way to go to ceremonies for people that are ready for that. And now we're going to microdosing of ayahuasca. And I've designed the program around microdosing ayahuasca. And I just want to say, before I talk about it, a few things. You know, with microdosing, you know, I'm not saying we're taking any like controlled substance. Um, we're not using a drug. No, we don't microdose a medicine in the Western sense of the of the word. You know, it, we're not using any supplements, and we don't no say that microdosing has any therapeutic or medicinal uh, benefits. We just want to say that before we speak about this program. So, having said that, microdosing ayahuasca is a beautiful way to work with ayahuasca, and it's also a way that much more accessible for people. Because a ceremony is a very deep process and not everyone is ready for that. Not everyone is looking for that. And microdosing is a very beautiful, gentle way to work with ayahuasca. But that's again, we have seen very beautiful shifts in people of healing, growth, inspiration. So I think it's, it's, it's really a special way to work with the medicine. So I designed the a three-month program around microdosing ayahuasca. And when I started experimenting with it myself, uh, let's say six years ago I started, I started to microdose ayahuasca as the medicine that we use in ceremony. So that means ayahuasca that's made of two components, the ayahuasca vine, plus the leaf that comes from the chacruna plant that contains DMT. But ayahuasca vine itself does not contain DMT, only the leaf that you mix into the medicine has DMT. I started microdosing that, taking a tiny spoon every morning and see how that goes. Beautiful effects. A lot of like clarity in the mind. A lot of inspiration came through. Beautiful energy. It was like I was getting in a kind of state of flow. Just like a lot of synchronicities happening, just meeting the right people, the right situations would just come up. It was just really beautiful to go into that state of flow. Um... What I started to feel into intuitively, like, is it really the DMT that's offering this experience? Because it's so much written about the effects of DMT and ayahuasca. And I was like, the medicine is called ayahuasca. And in the ayahuasca vine, there's no DMT. So if DMT is really that important, if it's the most important part, why is the medicine not called chacruna? Or another name of a plant that contains DMT? So with that kind of intuitive thought, I started to make a medicine that did not contain DMT and was only made from the ayahuasca vine. So basically cooked the tea from the ayahuasca vine that does not contain DMT. And I started to make this with that. And what I saw that it would bring the exact same effects as the microdosing with DMT. And that happened two, three years ago. And, and now we created the online course, online program of three months um, around microdosing ayahuasca. Amazing. Mm. 
So every day people take a micro dose of ayahuasca and there's other things involved like intention setting, Mm. yoga. Mm. Tell us about that. So we give people the ayahuasca tea or the medicine to use Mm -hmm. in this microdosing program. Uh, We ship it to the people. So people get like really high quality ayahuasca, which is something that's very difficult to to make yourself uh, in, in that quality that we offer. Or even in any quality, I think. It's not something you can just find you know, in a shop or on the internet. So we mm-hmm. provide people that. And then we teach people really how to work with that. And you're working with a plant spirit. So you're inviting that spirit into your life. And that spirit is, is quite an energy. And with any energy that you invite in your life or your own energy, it's good to give that energy a direction. To tell, okay, this is where I would like to go. And that is setting a clear intention or a set of intentions. So the start of the program is that people set their intentions for that program. And we help them with that. I wrote a workbook around setting intentions to really guide people. How do you set the good intentions? How do I know what I want? How does intentions look like? So the setting of intentions is the start of the program. We help people with that. There are videos around that. You know, it's, it's an online course. Then the second step is, okay, now we're actually going to start the taking of the ayahuasca tea. And we teach people how to do that. Take the right dose every day, a small spoon. And before you take that spoon, you voice your intentions in a certain way. It really amplifies the effects of the medicine. Like you make it like a morning ritual. And that's the way you start the day. You set your direction and you take the ayahuasca vine. Now you're basically spoon feeding yourself with this divine feminine energy. That's the ayahuasca. And when you microdose ayahuasca in that way, ideally you don't feel anything in your daily life. That means you can be completely present for your relationships, your work, you can drive a car, no, you can do anything that you normally would do. And after a while, let's say a few weeks, then you start to feel the medicine of the microdosing, but in a different way. People feel that intuition is heightened, more creativity comes in. Some people feel, let's say, more in a darker space, where they move to a more lighter space. Now, I've seen various things happen in my code. It's very beautiful to see wow. that shift. And what we also show people to connect every day with themselves in a daily spiritual practice. Because going to ceremonies or ayahuasca is being like in a waterfall of this amazing spiritual energy. Yes. <laughs> is that how you feel? Yes. So when you come out, it's sometimes not easy to keep that energy inside. So to have a daily spiritual practice, on a daily basis, you connect with that spiritual source. Right. So we help people to go into a daily practice of meditation. And in the beginning of the program, with a very simple, easy to follow guided meditation that people get as an audio recording. And then in the second half of the program, we use a bit more advanced meditations and videos. And from both the audio meditation plus the video meditation, we have several meditations available. And we're going to really find that meditation that fits you and what you want to work on. So it's a very customized program. Yeah, that way. That's, that's beautiful. And then there will be videos with instructions, guidelines. You know, this is happening at this moment. This is the way how to deal with that. You know, just like explanations. And every two weeks, there will be like a coaching call where we come together as a community that's all the, the people that are in that program and there we share there we ask questions and there we give answers and that community feeling is really beautiful because to go to a certain process with a group of people that go to the same process is really helpful and those calls are great places to get clarity on questions that you have but those that clarity is not the only thing you might receive or not the only thing you might give because when you ask a question, you get an answer. Maybe somebody else that's also in that call may think like, oh yeah, wow, it's happened to me as well last week. I, wow. I kind of forgot. This is the way how to do that. So you learn a lot from each other. Yeah. It's a really beautiful community yeah. feeling. It's like everyone is meant to be there at the same time, just like in a ceremony, which is exactly. very much how I felt. Yeah. And also we work with accountability partners. So we'll be partnered up one by one with somebody. And it's good to check in with each other, to really share what's going on and just to have a buddy. That's you know? so cool. Yeah, I didn't know about that. Yeah. I'm so excited to have a buddy. Yeah. Is it just randomly assigned? 
Everything happens in divine okay. order. Let's Random say like that. is probably not the right word, but it's yeah, meant to be assigned. Yeah. We will help the heart of people find them themselves yeah. in many ways that can happen. Yeah. So can you talk about how uh, microdosing could not become addictive, for example? Hmm. Very good question. So the way I set up the program is that you go to this three months. Three months, 90 days is a very good amount of time. It takes 90 days for the cells in your physical blood that runs through your veins to renew. So that means the cells die or reborn is a cycle. That cycle of those blood cells takes 90 days. To go with one practice, in this case, microdosing and the morning ritual, daily spiritual practice, for 90 days, that's the way to create a new habit. So on a very physical level, your whole body has to go through one thing for 90 days every day to create a new habit. And so we're creating new habits in this program. And what's beautiful about microdosing, so this program has many components, several components, and microdosing is kind of like the kickstart of that, let's say, vehicle that you put in movement, which is you. But once the vehicle is in really good movement, which we are going to take care of in those 90 days, then you follow your intuition. Some people will want to continue with microdosing, which is possible. And then probably comes a moment for people that they feel, hmm, feels like time to slowly wane it down. Mm-hmm. And people slowly wane it down. You don't stop in one day. No, right. You slowly go down. You take it out of your system. And then if you keep a daily spiritual practice up, you have kick-started that motor. But actually the fuel that keeps that engine running, that's your daily spiritual practice. Yeah. So you can continue your practice and stay in that elevated state of flow, as you would call it, without microdosing. That's the purpose on a longer term for that program. So with that, you don't become addicted to microdosing ayahuasca. You'll be taught a way to come in a state that has, let's say, a high vibration, an elevated state, a state of flow. I love that. Mm. Love that because that's, yeah, that's a big question from people my family being some of them like how do you know it's not going to be addicting and um if you love it when you do it and it makes sense yeah and also good to know on a very physical molecular level ayahuasca is not addictive Mm -hmm. a lot for example if you take tobacco and nicotine is addictive to the body science have proven that so if you go off nicotine your body will go to a process of withdrawal or if you take like substances like cocaine or heroin, very addictive to the system, ayahuasca have none of those addictive uh, molecules uh, inside. Zero. That's very helpful to know. Yeah, that makes sense. So where can people find the microdosing program? Mm. So people can find the microdosing program on, on my website. Uh, the, one of the websites is Aya Flow. So Aya ayahuasca short for ayahuasca mm-hmm. aya um, flow state of flow so ayaflow.com and what we did there on the homepage, you know to help people like every journey starts with the setting of an intention so there people can download the a workbook that we have made especially for these kind of people that are, want to learn more about how can I set intentions so people can learn a bit how we work and then there, they can find the program uh, in that book. There's a link and also an email that we send to people. So in that way, they can find about the program. And um, people can sign up now till the end of February. And in March, we start the next round. And then there will be more rounds, more in the future. But that's the next round that we're going to start. So if people are interested, they can always contact us to the website if there are any questions or download that um, intention setting workbook. And like that, they can learn about it. Amazing. So that's exciting. I'm very excited to partake at the end of February uh, during my water fast to the intention setting, um, get really clear on my spiritual practice, all my intentions, and then eventually begin the microdosing itself. So yeah, I'm very, very grateful to you for creating creating such a beautiful program 
Um, I feel like microdosing ayahuasca is not something that you hear about ever. Um, mm. So, yeah, I think what you've built is so beautiful. Thank you. And that might be the first ayahuasca microdosing course that's out there. Yeah. And what's also good for people to know, like working on a ceremonial way with ayahuasca, going to an ayahuasca ceremony is, is, can be a big step for people. And microdosing can be an amazing, gentle introduction to the medicine. But gentle does not mean that it has not, cannot have beautiful, profound effects. Right. But those effects come on a longer term base. On a, a ceremony can be one night, two nights, three nights, something like that, maybe a few nights more. Mm -hmm. It's a very strong um, experience. And ayahuasca works. The microdosing program that we designed works over several months. And in those months, you're in your life, in your relationships, in your work, doing all the things you normally do. So that shift, that transformation comes much more gentle. And it has also, through that, a much more bigger chance that you can take that transformation further into life for a longer time. It's a beautiful, gentle, accessible way for people to work with ayahuasca. Yeah, it sounds like it. And I'm excited to experience it. And yeah, for everybody out there who's maybe worried to jump into a ceremony, but they know they want to experience some kind of healing benefit, or I know that the microdosing doesn't promise any thing specific healing or otherwise um but if it's calling to them for whatever reason then it's a beautiful option yeah it is but also i've seen microdosing can be really helpful for the integration right of ayahuasca ceremonies and people that's what i'm looking for yeah. like how do i integrate all that be beauty that i felt um and feel so healthy and so light mm. and I've felt it for the last few weeks, but I also feel like it might be drifting now, not drifting away because I feel I always have access to it, but life is going on and things are happening and I'm, I'm, I still have a disease, so I still have to manage my symptoms and I think this will be really helpful. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So thank you for coming on and for, sharing with us about everything ayahuasca and microdosing and everything in between mm, you're welcome and thank you so much jordan for inviting me on your podcast it's been uh, an honor and a pleasure to be here thank you so much to all the people that are listening for spending this time with us and it would be beautiful to hear from you or to see some of you in in the microdosing course yeah thank you to yeah, to everyone and especially yeah, to you absolutely thank you so much for teaching us so much and um we'd love to have you back on to go even deeper because there's so much that we can discuss we'd be happy to we look forward to that me too mm. all right guys what did you think of this episode with dennis so informative. He shared so much great information about plant medicine, ayahuasca, the traditional practices and journeys and what to look for if you're looking to do an ayahuasca plant medicine journey of your own at any point. You're doing his microdosing program. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can head to iaflow.com, A-Y-A-Flow.com, which we'll also put in the show notes. And you guys can check out everything that he's up to and see if it possibly feels like a fit for you. And if not, that's amazing too. Thank you for listening to the episode and hopefully having your mind expanded in new ways and learning a few things, which always makes me happy to share. I also wanted to thank our sponsors for today's episode. We have Ned, the amazing hemp oil company that I've been using to help me sleep and for pain relief and anti-inflammatory benefits and so much more. So you can go to helloned.com slash balanced to get 15% off of those hemp infused products and also to Silver Fern. 
which has my favorite probiotics and digestive enzymes. You can find at silverfernbrand.com slash blonde to get a discount there. And like I said, keep your eyes out because we have some fun things in the pipelines together this year. I just love Silverfern and everyone who works there. They're incredible. Um, most of all, thank you to Dennis for being here and sharing your wisdom with us. And thank you to everyone listening. You guys support this show and that makes me so grateful and so happy. So I've been actually sending everyone who rates and reviews the podcast and sends me a screenshot to Jordan at thebalancedblonde.com of your rating and review, which you can snap before it goes through or else it's kind of hard to find. Um, I've been sending every single person who rates and reviews lately my Soul on Fire yoga ebook, which is almost 400 pages of yoga flow and um, pose breakdowns, Sanskrit glossary. It's really good for people who are looking to get into yoga, but aren't sure where to start. And it's also helpful for people who have more of an intermediate or advanced practice, but um, need some flows to do at home or want to learn more about my personal yoga journey. So this is something I created about two years ago. And since it's been out in the world for a couple of years, I really just feel like gifting it to everyone who supports the show. Um, It really means so much to me to have you guys here listening. And when you take time out of your day to rate and review on iTunes, which really helps the show's visibility a lot, um, it means the world. So I like to gift something to you that's very dear to my heart. And right now that's the Soul on Fire yoga ebook. So if you feel inspired to do that, send me a screenshot and that's to Jordan at thebalancebond.com and I'll send you the yoga ebook. And also, if you want to keep the conversation going, we have the Soul on Fire podcast tribe on Facebook. That's a really, really cool active community of people where we have community in there from all over the world. And people have started doing meetups in their own city, making new friends, makes me so happy. And I also have the High Vibe Chronic Lyme and Chronic Illness tribe on Facebook for everyone who's suffering also from being sick like myself so you're not alone um thank you guys for being here thanks for listening and as always let me know your thoughts on instagram send me messages um send screenshots of you listening to the show and i will chat with you there um love hearing from you guys and everything that you think as always so please share with me and Yeah, I'm just full of love and gratitude for all of you. I hope everyone's having a soul on fire day. And till next week, talk to you next Wednesday.